If you've seen Forsaken's E3 trailer last week, I'm sure one question immediately came to your mind. Is Cade really dead? And if so, will he make a return, and can he come back? Today we're going to dive deeper into the mysteries behind the Traveler's power, if exos like Cade can be rebooted, and if he truly will die in Forsaken. They are taken. Eris, get your rock off my map. So let's kick this video off by answering the question that we all have. Is Cade really dead? Now from a marketing perspective, this is actually pretty genius if you think about it. We've had countless expansions where the antagonist was some type of alien god that threatened our existence and what was left of humanity, right? In those stories in DLC, we always prevailed as a hero. Everyone was okay, we became legend, and the NPCs that were close to us were unharmed. A great example of this is in Destiny 2's campaign. Although Gaul and the Red Legion were daunting and caused this detrimental damage to the city, most of our close allies in the tower survived. Now obviously not the speaker, but it seems like most people didn't really care about him anyway. With Forsaken, Bungie went straight for the throat, taking a character like Cade 6 that everyone loves and just simply killing him off. Now the cool thing is that this is setting up the ultimate revenge story, and the enemy on the other side this time isn't just aliens, yes we're going to fight the scorn, fallen zombies, but Aldrin betrays the guardians and turns to the dark side, a side he may have been on all along, but it's more obvious at this point. This is the story of a guardian going to stop madness in the prison, and avenging a fallen friend who's helped us time and time before. So will this friend, Kate 6 get rebooted? Now in case you are new to Destiny, Exos have this thing, or this thing can be done to them, and it's called getting rebooted. Now take a listen to this Clovis Bray audio which describes it perfectly, and if you don't want to listen to it, you can skip forward a bit. Early experiments in exoscience managed to encode the human consciousness into a form that could be processed digitally. At the time, we believed that was the big hurdle to overcome in the creation of the Exo. Little did we know, the real challenge would be the phenomenon known as dissociative exomind rejection. Nascent proto-exos developed serious symptoms of cognitive disorder that eventually led to death. It turned out the human mind would not reconcile its presence in a new body. It took multiple iterations in design, but the Clovis Bray Corporation eventually developed several solutions. The first is to reboot the mind once it has been transferred, allowing it to awaken inside its new shell as though it were being reborn. This has side effects of memory loss and fragmentation, but it's highly effective in the prevention of DER. The reboot process can be repeated multiple times to further the odds of survival. It is not currently known how many times a human consciousness can be rebooted, but scientists estimate it to be around 20. The second preventative measure to DER is to program certain humanisms within exos. As machines, they have not the physical needs to eat or reproduce like real humans, but artificially injecting that drive has been clinically proven to reduce the odds of DER. Further experimentation is required to perfect the EXO project, but you can be assured that Clovis Bray is at the forefront in the field of exoscience. So as you heard, exos can get rebooted. This wipes their memory, um, sometimes it gets them used to their exo body they're getting into, but it doesn't mention anything about death. So the thing is, if an exo dies, it's dead. A reboot is not even possible, and that was not the intention by Clovis Bray in the first place. Reboots were basically to relieve the stress from the human mind being in an robotic body, and like you heard the console say, they're further the odds of survival. So a reboot isn't something that can be performed after death to bring the exo back. Now in Destiny, what type of entities do we know that can revive a guardian and bring them back to life? Well, that's none other than the ghosts. So besides Nakris, who was a necromancer, you have the ghost who wield the Traveler's power called the Light. 
So the ghost is capable of reviving us, and this could be the case with Cade, but something that kind of puts the nail in the coffin for his case is what happens in the trailer with his ghost. Now we see it here, it looks all damaged, hovering around Cade's burnt looking face, and then he just gets shot out of the air by one of the fallen, I think. Now what we don't see after this is where the ghost lands. It may have somehow survived, we can't find it after he gets shot, but keep that in mind. But if the ghost is in fact truly dead, this means Kate has zero chance of revival. As we see from the campaign, if a ghost is killed, their guardian has no chance of survival after death. Had no chance without their powers. That could be us. Guardian, if you die, I can't resurrect you. We need to be very careful. Now if the ghost did somehow survive, this could go on some type of quest like in the Curse of Osiris to retrieve that ghost. Remember we went out there and got Sagira and she helped us out, you know, she was alive. This could be sort of the same thing, but that's just a thought and there's no confirmation on it actually being alive. Now with all of this, there's still those questions revolving around Cade Six's previous life before he became an XO. So I've explained this many times throughout videos, so I'll just make it, you know, short and brief for you guys that have already heard it. But basically, at one point, Cade was a human. He had some problems going on. He had these sort of like bounties put on his head, and he needed a way to get out of all of this. Cade was then approached by Clovis Bray with his EXO program, which had a job offer, basically. Cade didn't really know what was going to happen, but he remembers going to a cold place where he was converted into an EXO. So in Destiny 2, there's also Cade's letter fragments which talk about his son and his wife, and the cool thing is that his son's name is Ace and his weapon is the Ace of Spades. So there's been many theories I've seen people discussing about Aldrin being Ace, but I don't think that's possible at all, just thought I'd throw that out there. We heard that terminal thing mention the number of reboots an EXO can have before they start going a little bit crazy. In that audio clip there, he mentioned about 20, but the funny thing is Banshee44 has had 44 reboots, and that guy's memory is just drained. So when you look at an EXO like Cade, he's only had 6 reboots, which means, you know, he's freshly new, he's gone through it a couple of times, but nothing major. But then again, he was also human at one point, and his consciousness got put into this EXO body. So that was some of the lore proof behind it, I guess, but Bungie also confirmed this in various interviews. First of all, uh, we, we, we didn't kill Cade. Okay. So don't hate us. Uh, okay. Aldrin, Aldrin killed yes. Cade. Uh, but most importantly, we wanted there to be consequence in a world filled with immortal heroes. And we wanted that consequence to be personal. It was a really serious call, but we think it's the right thing to make players really, really care about their journey. Is he really dead? He looks dead. He looks does not dead. look good. Exactly. He's dead. Okay. He is dead. So in my opinion, from most of this evidence, Cade is gone in Forsaken. He isn't going to come back, and this will play a major role in the story of the DLC. Now, it would be pretty weird if he did somehow survive towards the end of the story, right? But that's the thing. We did prove that Cade is gone for good. They want us to think that he's gone by telling us all this information, but we don't develop the story. What if there's some type of new process or idea Bungie came up with that's going to revive Cade? Things like the Traveler being alive after the campaign, there's space magic, you know, flowing everywhere, so who knows what can happen. Now there's also those theories floating around out there suggesting that this character is the Exo Stranger. Some people see it, some don't, but this is most likely just our Guardian carrying Kate. But think about how crazy that would be though. The Stranger, Elsie Bray, gets a hold of Kate with our help, takes him back to the Hellas Basin and does some time traveling work to save him. That'd definitely be pretty crazy. So Guardians, in my last video I talked about some voice acting opportunities for my game, and I had two different voice roles on that list. So now in this video I'm just kind of keeping you updated. We still need the role of Damon, and these scripts can be found down below. Just send over your clips to destinyguides.yahoo.com, and I'll give them a review. Make sure you definitely stay tuned to some of the ends of these videos because I'm going to give updates like this one, and even if you don't like voice acting or you're not into that sort of thing, I'm currently working on a project that can make you appear in my game. Whoever submits will be able to, and I'll talk about that very soon. Anyway Guardians, that's all I have for today's video. How do you feel about Cade's death being permanent, and does it fuel your fire when it comes to taking down Aldrin and his barons? If you enjoyed, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to more awesome Destiny 2 news and entertainment. I'm Evade and I'll catch you Guardians in the next one.